Welcome back, humans. Today, we're going to conquer Fartology 101, the gas we pass, and why some smells worse than others. You know, I had an alternate title for this. It was called The Physics of Farts, A Cheeky Exploration of Flatulence. So whatever title you prefer, we're going to dive deeply into the fascinating world of flatulence and explore the science behind the gas we pass. I'm your friendly host, Jason, and today we're going to be breaking wind barriers as we unravel the mysteries of why some farts smell worse than others. The friendly fart. They're a universal experience, yet they remain one of the most taboo topics of conversations and a little embarrassing for most of us. But fear not, because today we're pulling back the curtain, or should I say, lifting the blanket, to shine a light on the chemistry behind this natural bodily function. Before we delve into why some farts smell a bit worse than others, let's start off by understanding what a fart actually is and how they're produced. Farts, which are otherwise known as flatulence, are primarily composed of gases that are produced by the bacterial fermentation of undigested food in our intestines. Now, when we eat, food travels through the digestive system where it's broken down by enzymes and bacteria. Now, during this process, gases such as methane, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and small amounts of sulfur-containing compounds are produced as byproducts. Now, these gases accumulate in the intestines until they are eventually expelled from the body through your rear end as a fart. Now, we're going to talk a whole lot more about this in detail very soon, but this is your friendly neighborhood methane molecule. Here we have a single carbon in the middle, one, two, three, four hydrogen. So you see uh, methane written as CH4 chemically, but I want you to remember this structure because we're going to talk a little bit more detail about this a bit later. Notice the hydrogen atoms are coming off at equal angles to one another as you go around the molecule, equally spaced around the central carbon atom. Now let's talk a little bit about the role of bacteria in the production of our friendly neighborhood farts. The human gut is home to trillions of microorganisms collectively known as the gut microbiota. These bacteria play a crucial role in digestion and nutrient absorption, but they also produce gases as a byproduct as they break down food. Certain types of bacteria, particularly those belonging to the genera bacterioides, firmicutes, and actinobacteria, are known to produce gases like hydrogen and methane during the fermentation of carbohydrates in the gut. Additionally, sulfur-reducing bacteria, such as Prevotella, are responsible for producing the foul-smelling sulfur compounds like hydrogen sulfide and methyl mercaptan, the stinky culprits behind the infamous rotten egg smell. Now, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty a little more in just a minute, but I invite you to look at the periodic table. On the left-hand side is hydrogen, element number one, the simplest element. On the right-hand side, if you look closely, you'll find the element sulfur. Now, you, you can tell or figure out how the element is going to behave by its position on the periodic table. The hydrogen, in most cases, is going to want to gain an electron to look as close as it can to its nearest noble gas, which is helium. So hydrogen, in general, wants to attract another electron. Sometimes it loses an electron, but sometimes, most of the time, it gains an electron to look like helium. Now, sulfur, being two columns over from the noble gases on the right, also wants to gain electrons, it wants to gain two electrons. So if you have sulfur wanting to gain two electrons and hydrogen wanting to gain one electron, what ends up happening is they bond in such a way as H2S, two hydrogen atoms bonding with one atom of sulfur. And that makes hydrogen sulfide. So what happens is since you have two hydrogens connected or bonded to the sulfur, each of the sulfur electrons uh, gains an additional electron uh, in the outer shell with the hydrogen. So the hydrogen gains one, uh, shares one from the sulfur, and the sulfur shares the one from the hydrogen. So each element is happy because sulfur wants two electrons. That's why there's two hydrogens attached, 
sharing, it kind of gains or borrows or shares two electrons, one from each hydrogen, and each hydrogen is also happy because it wants to each gain one electron and it gets it from one uh, of the two free electrons in the outer valence shell of the sulfur. So that's why it bonds as H2S. Now there's a whole family of compounds involving sulfur. Uh, there's hydrogen sulfide, there's others that kind of have that characteristic rotten egg smell that we associate with flatulence. Now that we understand the basics of fart production, let's take a closer look at the chemical composition of farts and why some of them smell worse than others. As mentioned earlier, farts are primarily consisting of gases such as methane, CH4, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide, CO2, as well as amounts of sulfur-containing compounds. The most recognizable one is the hydrogen sulfide we just mentioned. Now, the foul odor associated with certain farts, again, is attributed to the sulfur compounds, H2S, as we just mentioned a minute ago. These compounds are produced when sulfur-containing amino acids in food, like eggs, meat, and other vegetables, are broken down by bacteria in the gut. What's the result of this? Well, it's a pungent aroma that can clear a room in mere seconds. Now we want to talk about one of the age-old questions surrounding flatulence. Are they truly flammable? Could you light one on fire, even if it may not be advisable? It's a topic that has sparked curiosity and sparked many a backyard experiment as well, but is there any truth to the claim that farts can ignite? And if so, why? So what's the answer to this conundrum? Well, the short answer is yes. Farts can indeed be flammable under the right conditions. Farts primarily consist of gases such as methane, which is flammable, hydrogen, which is flammable, carbon dioxide, that's not very flammable, but it's in there, and of course all the other compounds that make it smell bad. Methane in particular is highly flammable and is the main component responsible for the flammability of farts. So let's take a look at that anyway. This is our methane molecule. We have one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. There. Now these hydrogens are bonded to the carbon in the center, and so it's a stable configuration. Nothing is going to happen to this unless something else comes along that wants these hydrogens even more than the carbon does, right? And so what is that? Oxygen. Oxygen is an electron hog. It's what we call highly electronegative. There is a very strong propensity for uh, oxygen to attract and hold onto electrons. The reason why is just has to do with the number of protons in the nucleus and the way the electrons are distributed around. And that creates a net force that's very highly attractive to electrons. Now this carbon also wants to hold on to electrons. That's why it's bonded and sharing with these hydrogen atoms here as well. But when an electron comes along, what ends up happening is the attraction of these electrons here to the oxygen is stronger physically with a, hot, a higher force than the force of attraction holding in this shared bond here, this covalent bond right here. So what happens is when oxygen comes into contact with this, with one more ingredient that we will talk about in just a second, then what happens is literally the hydrogen disconnects from here and reconnects with the oxygen. The electrons get redistributed and shared in a different way. And what do you think it forms? We have hydrogen, we have oxygen, from the air, and so it forms H2O, right? Uh, methane, when you burn it, produces, as one of the byproducts, water. Now, if you just took a methane molecule like this, and you just took an oxygen here, the oxygen is a, is a stable molecule by itself, O2. It's two oxygen atoms bonded together. If you just literally connect it together, try to bump it into each other, nothing will happen, because this is a stable configuration. All the sharing of electrons here is governed by uh, forces between the carbon and the hydrogen. The oxygen is bonded to itself as O2, and it's also highly stable. So you need one more ingredient to make anything happen, and what is that? We need a spark or a flame. You've all heard of kindling temperature, right? A, a piece of paper is not going to just sp spontaneously burst into flames. I mean, this, this styrofoam here and this, uh, this little ball, this will burn if I put a flame to it, but it's not burning now. There is oxygen surrounding it. There is fuel right here. There is oxygen around it. Why doesn't it burn? Well, we know it needs a spark. What does the spark do? Well, the spark heats up the uh, oxygen bumping into this molecule and it heats up the methane and it agitates everything in such a way that the collisions between the oxygen and the methane, statistically, when you heat it up with a flame, will knock one of these hydrogens off and literally knock it loose such that these electrons can be redistributed into a more stable configuration, which is water. 
Water is, is what we say at a, at a lower energy state. It's like the top of a mountain up here. The top of a mountain is at a high energy state and the bottom of the mountain is at a low energy state. I can balance a bowling ball at the top of the mountain. It's not gonna roll down by itself because it's in a local stable little area at the top of the mountain. But if I give it a little bit of a push, a little bit of energy, just like the spark, then it will get over that initial kind of resting position and then it will rapidly roll down the mountain all the way to a lower energy state, a more stable configuration, which is at the very bottom of the mountain. That's the same thing going on here. This is stable. The oxygen is stable, but by the addition of a little bit of energy, we jostle it around enough to knock some of these things loose, and then these electrons are then attracted to whatever's pulling it harder, which is the oxygen. And then it makes water, which is at a lower energy state. And that is why there is so much water on this planet. So much water on this planet because water is extremely stable. I mean, you can break it apart, but it's like the bottom of the mountain. It's very, very stable, so there's water everywhere. By the way, if this hydrogen pops off and combines with the oxygen to make H2O, by the way, you would need two hydrogens to go over there and combine with some oxygen to make the H2O, but you get the point, then what other byproduct would we expect to get? Well, there's a carbon in the center here, and so what you're going to get is you're going to get, instead of CH4, what you're going to get is some of this uh, carbon is going to combine with some of the oxygen and make CO2. So when you burn the methane, you're going to get H2O, but you're also going to get CO2. Almost everything that we combust that contains carbon is going to eventually, at some form or fashion, almost always produce CO2 plus H2O. CO2, carbon dioxide, very, very stable. It's also very low at the bottom of the mountain, meaning everything is even more stable in that, in that configuration of CO2. And H2O is the same way. So when we burn almost anything from firewood to plastic, you know, we almost always get CO2 plus H2O, and that's what we get when you light a fart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and state the obvious and give you a disclaimer right now. I recommend not trying this because it's flame, it's near your rear end, it's going to hurt, and it actually can burn you, so do not do this at home. Now, while all farts have the potential to be flammable, depending on various items like the concentration of methane and other things, what causes some to be more flammable than others? The flammability of a fart depends on many factors, including how much methane is actually in there, the presence of other combustible gases, such as hydrogen we talked about earlier, and how intense or what is the proximity to an ignition source. Now, farts that contain a higher concentration of methane are more likely to be flammable as they are the most combustible component in most farts, but additionally, farts that are released with force, such as those produced during a bout of flatulence, of intense flatulence, are more likely to mix with the surrounding air, which is also very important. And when it comes into contact with an ignition source, of course, it can catch on fire and ignite. So, caution, do not do this at home, but what we're basically saying here is, the more forceful the flatulence, and the and more intense the spark, then the more likely it is to be able to be ignited. Now, several factors can influence the odor of flatulence, including the diet, the gut microbiota, that means what kind of bacteria are in your gut, the composition of those bacteria, and the individual variations in digestion and your metabolism. Now, certain foods in your diet, such as beans, cabbage, onions, and dairy products are notorious for causing smelly farts due to their high fiber content and high sulfur content, Remember, the sulfur with the hydrogen sulfide leads to the odor. Now also, artificial sweeteners like sorbitol and xylitol can also ferment in the gut and produce gas, leading to increased fart odor and volume of flatulence. In addition, the composition of the gut microbiota varies from person to person and can influence the types and amounts of gases produced during digestion. Individuals with higher abundance of sulfur-reducing bacteria may produce farts with a stronger odor compared to those with a different microbial profile. Now, there are many digestive disorders, such as irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, and celiac disease, and these can disrupt the normal balance of gut bacteria and lead to increased flatulence and production and odor of farts. So what are some strategies? What can you do if your farts are causing a stink? While it's impossible to eliminate 
fart odor completely, there are a few strategies you can try to minimize its impact. The first thing is you can avoid foods known to cause smelly flatulence, such as beans, cabbage, onions, and dairy products. And instead, you can opt for a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. You can also really work hard on staying hydrated. Drinking plenty of water can help to flush out the digestive system and reduce the concentration of the smelly gases in your farts. I mean, all this stuff is happening in your gut anyway, so the more water you drink, the more you're flushing all of that out in the first place. You can also consider probiotics. These probiotic supplements contain beneficial bacteria, such as lactobacillus, and they may help restore balance to your gut microbiome and reduce the odor of your farts. Now here's a public safety announcement. If you're experiencing excessive farting or persistent fart odor, it's a good idea to consult with a healthcare professional to rule out any underlying digestive issues. So in conclusion, farts may be a natural and inevitable part of the human experience, but understanding the science behind them can help demystify this often taboo topic. From the role of bacteria in fart production to the chemical composition of fart gases, there's more to flatulence than meets the nose. So the next time you let one rip, remember, it's just your gut microbiome doing its thing, and if it smells particularly foul, blame it on the sulfur-reducing bacteria in your gut. After all, they're the real stinkers in this equation. So that wraps up today's topic, Fartology 101, or the physics of farts, a cheeky exploration of flatulence. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for tuning in. Please do drop me a line. Let me know what you think. And remember, always stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.